Hello, hello. Welcome to the Happy Hippie Intuitive. This is Nina, and I am here to do the second half of this fall deck haul. I made the first video about a week ago, and that will be linked below in the description box, where I showed you 18 of the decks that I have purchased recently. And this video will have 16 decks that I have purchased recently. Some of them are new this fall, but some of them are not new, but are new to me. So I hope that you will enjoy this video. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. Let's sit down and have some cozy time. And I will start with the little Gilded Tarot in the middle here. And later we will get into some of the newer decks, even this one, which is unopened from Kyle Gray, the Gateway of Light Activation, together with this Villains Tarot deck that just came in the mail. So lots of fun stuff to look forward to today. So grab yourself a cup, pause the video if you need more time, because we're going to start in a minute with the Gilded Tarot Royale mini version. Okay, so let's start. The Gilded Tarot Royale. I mean, the Gilded Tarot have been here for a while, and it's it comes in a normal size uh, tarot, but this year they also released this Gilded Tarot Royale mini version. And I will just quickly show you, I guess many people already know the Chiro Marchetti uh, decks. He have made quite a few Chiro Marchetti. This one is a US Games uh, system. Um, print so I can I guess you can get it pretty much anywhere it doesn't have a guidebook but it's very kind of plain uh, very right away uh, friendly tarot deck and it's easy to read so of course if you need a guidebook then there are plenty of books to to find or if you buy the normal version of this Gilded Tarot Royale you will get a guidebook with it okay so let's look at it this is the back and these are the cards now these are very, very beautiful artwork. Chiro Marchetti is a very good artist. He makes beautiful, beautiful decks. I have showed a couple of them before. If you are unfamiliar with his work, I would say Google him and have a look at some of his different decks. Um, he has kind of the same style, I would say, on most of his decks. So some people say that if you have one deck of him, you kind of have them all or they look almost the same. Um, I have chosen to have pretty much all of his decks because I, I love his artwork. Uh, but I mean, that's very individual. So um, you do what you feel is best for you. I'm not going to go through all the cards in this deck also because the cards are quite small and also because this is a quite well-known tarot okay so this is just a mini version i like to have some mini decks that i have in my purse or when i'm visiting friends and such so always nice to have a tarot deck at hand you know okay so that was the gilded tarot royale the mini version okay now let's move on the next one is Ghost Tarot, uh, artwork by David Corzi, and this is a Los Scarabeo uh, deck made in Italy. Um, and these cards are, of course, the guidebook is, as always, the same from Los Scarabeo uh, decks. They always have the same kind of guidebook. It's to the point, easy, some words about every card, you know, just what you need kind of thing. The cardstock is always the same. Los Garbeo has the same cardstock, the same size for everything, pretty much. It's what I like about these decks, though, I have to say, is that they're a little bit heavy. So they, they land good in your hand. They are easy to shuffle. They do not stick. I don't think I've ever had a Los Garbeo deck that has uh, where the cards have been sticking together at all. So, but they're not too slippery, so they're actually quite perfect in that sense. I also feel like the size is quite perfect. I guess this is more or less the original tarot size. Maybe the original was a little bit wider, I'm not sure. But for me, the cardstock of these uh, cards are always very good. So let's look at this one, Ghost Tarot. So this is the back. And these are the cards and every card depicts a ghost in some way shape or form so this is much very much a deck that i wish had <laughs> arrived a little bit sooner so i would have had it uh, with my halloween uh, readings but 
it arrived a little bit later, but that's all right. So um, these are the cards. I really, really love the images in this. It's, I think it's really, uh, it's, not, it's not just a ghost for me. It's more also about remembrance that, like this card here, that the spirits are with us, you know, that they are part of our lives. Uh, and so that's kind of what drew me in uh, with this deck, actually. Not so much just the ghosts and, and the spooky kind of feel, but more the fact that they are with us, you know. They they kind of never left. So I think that's a, a beautiful thing. So, But of course the style is kind of uh, spooky looking and that of course uh, is very fun around Halloween. So definitely a deck I'm going to use around Halloween, I think. But of course a deck that you can use all year round. It doesn't only have to be Halloween. Um, because of what I just said about spirit being around. So yeah, I, I think it's fun. Uh, it's it's easy to understand. It has the, the main kind of themes from the Rider Waite Tarot. Uh, so you can read it intuitively, of course, but it's also easy to understand which card it is. Uh, when you know tarot, when you know the right away, okay? So they have, of course, some, some images that are a little bit different, but more or less that you can understand what it is all about quite easily, okay? So that was the Ghost Tarot from Lode Scarabeo. I got this one at Book Depository in England, but I do believe that it, it is also on Amazon or maybe pretty much anywhere. Uh, so you just have to to Google it. What? Oh, I can't really shut this down now. Well, okay. Ghost Tarot. Yeah. Next one. Vikings Tarot. <laughs> I had to have a Vikings Tarot. I'm Norwegian, you know. So Vikings is pretty much in my blood. So <laughs> so a Vikings Tarot, also Los Carabeo. So the same kind of guidebook in all sorts of languages, not just English, by the way. Uh, same cardstock as I showed you before. The backs and these are just love is two Viking shields. Beautiful. Now the images isn't kind of typical Viking, but it is um, it it is themed for the Vikings, if you will. So so I find it quite beautiful and fun. Okay, so let's look at it. So these are the images. Kind of fiery. The Vikings weren't only about fighting, you know. <laughs> and also it's misunderstood. The word Viking is actually not the people. It's when you do Viking. That's when you go out and uh, sail across the oceans and not just uh, rob and kill. <laughs> but they actually traded a lot too. So it's actually to Viking is to go kind of on, on sailing and, and doing that. It's the Vikings are not um, population or people. <laughs> so that's kind of misunderstood, but anyways. So, so these are the cards. Very special uh, artistry here. I mean, look at this. It's very unique to me, very different. And that's kind of what drew me in. Not just the Viking thing, but uh, uh, yeah, you know, so. And I felt like I had to have a Viking deck since I am Norwegian. We have, of course, a lot of Viking burials. Or this is um, a church, which is uh, in English, I guess, it's called Staff Church. In Norwegian, it's called Stavkirke. And we have lots of those here in Norway. Uh, and I, what I love about these is that when you go in there, you smell that very old timber. It's got a very unique smell. Just love that. Anyways, yeah, so this is uh, this is fun for me. Uh, Viking ships, we have those here too. They are actually rebuilding some of the old ones. Uh, building new copies of them here in Norway now. So that's fun. So we see them out on the fjord every now and then. Um, yeah, so I, as you can see, very, very different kind of artwork for me. Um, very special artwork and I find it fun. Um, not just because of the Vikings, as I said, but also because of the different artwork. So, that was fun, the Vikings Tarot. So, let's put that away. There you go. Okay. Moving on. What do we have? Okay, so these two I kind of have to show you 
um, together. They are called, they are two different decks uh, from the same kind of, what you, yeah, ground pillars, if you will, the Book of Shadows Tarot. But volume one is called As Above and volume two is called So Below. Okay, so let's look at As Above first and then So Below. Okay, Book of Shadows Tarot, volume one, As Above. So it's also Los Carabeo. So it's the same guidebook as I have shown you before. Same cardstock, same size. This is the back. And these are the cards. Now, um, they have changed in this deck the names of the major arcana, okay? So like for instance here, the chariot card is called transformation. So you can like it or you cannot like it, but this is the way it has been done. And if you know the numbers of the tarot, then you're fine. If you don't, it might be a little bit confusing, but of course then you can, can read the, it uh, this deck as it is, as it has been made, or you, of course you can uh, read it intuitively. So that's kind of up to you. Uh, I don't have a problem with it because I know, uh, like this one is the sun, so I, I know uh, the numbers of the, uh, uh, of the major arcana, but of course I don't know the, the names below, so then I have to go into the guidebook and read or, or Google or whatever. Uh, in the beginning, I must admit, it was a little bit annoying. <laughs> I have to be honest. Uh, but now I'm okay with it. And also, for me, it's about the images, okay? Very much about the images. I think this is a beautiful deck. I love the images, especially these little gnomes here. In Norway, we don't call them gnomes. We call them nisse. Nisse, for, uh, there were little people uh, that lives around the barns very often, out in the barn. And actually for Christmas, we always set out a bowl of porridge for, for the, um, they're also called mini Santas. Um, so we set out a, a bowl of porridge out in the barn um, with the horses uh, for Nissa, and we, so that they get food for Christmas. So that's kind of a Norwegian tradition. <laughs> Yeah, we do a lot of crazy stuff here in Scandinavia, I know. Anyways, okay, so don't you just love these images, though? I, I think they're very, very good. Some of them very intricate and beautiful, uh, very unique, like this uh, Ten of Fire, Ten of Wands. So I just love the images in this, and that's kind of what, and also, of course, these little Nissa or gnomes I, I really love. So unique images... And it is the kind of the story of, you know, the, the, the spirits that are around us. That's kind of the, the theme of this deck. So there are gnomes, there are fairies, there are angels, uh, you know, uh, ghosts and, you know, all sorts of stuff. And also, as you can see here, from all parts of the world. So um, it is in general uh, a very... Uh, all-round deck that t tells you something about all the spirits that are around us in nature among other things so so I find it very interesting you know um, very different beautiful artwork um, easy to understand I mean if you know tarot it, it really isn't that difficult and here they have made crone instead of a king by the way um, it's kind of the maturance of the female um, very much in this deck so yeah i i love this deck i think it's beautiful so there you go so that was the first part of these two book of shadows hero as above there okay now we move over to this one which is so below so this is more uh, our everyday life, us, us humans, kind of. Same book, it's Los Carabeo. Um, same cardstock, you know, and almost same back, just a little bit different colors. So let's look at the images. So this is our everyday life, more about us, okay? But also showing how the spirits play around us and how they also are a part of our lives. So here the, the Nissa or gnomes come back again. <laughs> Uh, so there are dragons in here and there are fairies in here, deceased loved ones maybe, you know, 
uh, all sorts of uh, different spiritual beings around us, okay? So I find this very beautiful as well. And this is very uh, different situations that you are in. Like this one is a birthday, you know, and this woman is working. It's different situations in our life where spirit is always around us, okay? So I find this quite beautiful. And also the artwork in this one is really good, I think. Uh, I really love this artwork as well. There are so many good artists out there. Um, and of course, people are getting more and more into tarot and also the artists. And so the artistry now on tarot decks are just blooming. It's really, really fun. And there's so many different kinds and different takes on the different cards and the meanings and... You know, so you can choose to read all the all these cards uh, from the original tarot, or you can choose to read it from the feeling that it feels like the artist has given each and every picture. Now, I find that quite interesting, and that makes working with tarot even more fun and more challenging, right? So I really, really love that there are so many different artists and all these versatile, different kind of uh, ways of looking at the tarot. So this is the below tarot. I think it's really beautiful. I love this deck. Okay, so that's that. The second half of this Book of Shadow Tarot. There you go. Okay, now let's move over to um, three decks of different crystal decks. Let me see here. So I have these three different uh, crystals or stone decks that I'm going to show you. I didn't have that many about crystals before, so I chose to get some uh, quite a bit at once. So I'll take one at a time here. Let's start with this one. Healing Stones, 33 cards for health, vital energy and power by Kaya Lemke. So this is the book, quite a good uh, guidebook here. Uh, it's got quite good information about each and every crystal, which I love. A little bit about the history, where it can be found, uh, you know, what it's for and what it can heal. Okay, this is very much a healing deck, okay? So, let us look at the cards. So, the back, quite simple, easy, with all the crystals on it. And these are the images. So, it says the name of the crystal, it says uh, the main kind of theme, and then it kind of has a message on it as well. So, I find this very, very uh, informative, very nice. I love the pictures, they're very um, detailed. And as you can see, some of them have two different pictures to, sh to show, because sometimes they just uh, show the raw crystal, for instance, and then you're lost, <laughs> because sometimes it's very difficult to know, you know. So I, I find that very good that they have chosen to, to very many pictures here, have two, okay. So that's cool. Anyways, no, so this is a very good, uh, um, a very good uh, a deck. I do believe, I'm not so sure, I'll have to double check here in a minute, but one of these decks uh, is missing a crystal that I really, really love. So let me just check if that's this book here. Um, I do believe this is uh, the one. Let's see, Moonstone, yeah. It doesn't have uh, Moldavite, uh, I believe. I don't think so. Let's just double check real quick. I didn't see Moldavite in here. Moonstone, that was the only one on M, I think. Uh, so that's a crystal that I'm really missing here is Moldavite. But okay, you can't get it all. But some of the other decks I do believe have it. So there you go. So that was Healing Stones. Moving on. Next one. This is called Crystals the Stone Deck, okay? And it's got a little drawer that you pull out. A little bit hard though. <laughs> okay, so that's the way it opens and it has a little guidebook, but that's very, very small, okay? 
So this is just kind of uh, very little information, I must say, but okay. Um, it has information on the back side of each card, so I guess that kind of weighs up for it, okay? Because as you can see, a lot of information on the back. Now, the front only have pictures. What's good about it is that when you do a pick a card, this is brilliant because then it doesn't say anything. People kind of get drawn only into the picture to make their pick. And I find that very, very good. So um, these are the images, okay? I'm only going to do the images because on the back side, it's all the same. It's just a little bit of different coloring as you can see on each card here, but it's just information where to put it, uh, who needs it, what it is, when to use it, information, different colors on the back, and just a picture of the stone uh, on the front here, okay? So, but this is what I meant when it, I said earlier that they show the raw crystal, and then you're like, hmm, <laughs> what's this? <laughs> you know, smoky quartz, that one I know, yeah. So so it, so that that's kind of the only thing if I should dare to be a little bit critical uh, that it's difficult to understand which crystal it is because they only put a uh, this is black tourmaline yeah so they only put the, uh, the the more or less only the raw image uh, on here um, so for me it's a little bit difficult to know what card it is or which crystal sorry this could have been a smoky quartz but it's not it's citrine um, yeah so that, that's the only thing, okay? But again, I mean, if you are doing pick a card, maybe they shouldn't always know what crystal it is, but just be drawn to the picture itself. So in that sense, it's a good thing, maybe so. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So that's, um, that's this one, people. I do, I do love it, though. I mean, I think it's beautiful. Um, I haven't used it yet. Uh, but I will definitely. Uh, this one has Moldavite. Yeah, that's Moldavite. So, yeah, and this, of course, has a lot of cards. A lot of different crystals. And, of course, there is plenty of information on the backs, I guess, uh, of each crystal here. So, that weighs up for not having the guidebook very detailed. Okay, so that's crystals, the stone deck. 78 cards in this one so that's quite good okay I just need a sip of water please before we start with the next okay so let's move on daily crystal inspiration 52 cards in this one so let's look at it by Heather asking noise nosy as ask asking nosy I don't know I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong Heather um, yeah anyway so a good guidebook and not the only thing is it doesn't have the pictures in here, but you know, it has information, and it's quite quite okay information in here, I think, uh, enough at least to understand what each crystal is about. The back's quite beautiful, I think, and these are the images. Now the images here are good images, uh, just the name of the crystal, and then the main theme of each crystal, which makes it quite easy to read uh, when you mix it together with the reading. Uh, so I think this is quite good um, cards. Cardstock is also quite thick, not too thick, so they're bendy enough to do a corner ripple shuffle. Uh, I forgot to mention the other cards. The longer cards that we just looked at, they, they are not that easy to ripple shuffle. Uh, but these ones are okay. So it, is, it isn't the most expensive cardstock. As you can see, they kind of bend up a little bit. Can you see that on the edges? Uh, but I'm hoping that that will uh, go away after I've used it for a while. Uh, but it's okay. I mean, good enough. Good enough. So, beautiful images, though, of the crystals. And very easy because it's just the name and then one kind of main theme. But then again, people read uh, different stuff into crystals, not just one thing. So... Sometimes maybe it's a drawback, but then you read it intuitively or you use your own uh, way of reading the crystals, of course. So always something that's positive and maybe something negative. So the rainbow obsidian, I don't have that one. Hmm. Like I don't have enough crystals from before. <laughs> no, and now I need to get that one too. 
Anyways, no, it's, it's, I, I like this deck. I think I'm going to use it quite a bit in my reading, so, so that's cool. Yep, Daily Crystal Inspiration by Heather Askinoisy for something. Okay, that's it. And then we are moving on. So let's go to this one now, The Spirit Song Tarot by Paulina Cassidy. She has made some uh, decks before. She has a quite uh, special uh, design. Um, and I do believe I have a couple of her other Oracle decks, but I do, don't have them right here, so I can't show you right now. But she has made quite a bit. Okay, so this is, this is uh, a good guidebook. It doesn't have the pictures of the cards, but it's quite easy to follow because it has the numbers and, uh, and everything. So, yeah, I, I find it okay. It's, it's got, it's, I mean, for a tarot deck, it's got in, enough information. Um, but for some reason, I'm having a problem following the guidebook. It's a little bit, maybe because it starts on different, uh, you know, different uh, places on the, on the page. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm being very critical. Anyways, sorry about that. <laughs> I haven't used this deck yet, so ah, I just got it. Anyway, so this is the back. I love the back. It's beautiful, okay? Uh, cardstock is good. Good cardstock in this one. Now, these are the images. So, beautiful, beautiful images. Very intricate, very detailed. There is a lot going on, uh, but of course... It's a good thing that the cards are quite big because uh, there is a lot going on in the cards. So and that you, you, you couldn't have made this deck any smaller because then you would have missed out on a lot of detail here. So, so this is um, the cards. They have, of course, shells. Is, uh, they have changed the names of the uh, minor arcana. So... You kind of feathers is uh, air and shells is uh, water and and um, crystals I believe is uh, um, wands actually or is no crystals uh, no acorns acorns are wands and crystals are uh, pentacles sorry <laughs> airhead today uh, so these are the images I find them quite beautiful I like the color palette in this. Um, it's very feminine for me, the color palette and the images. Uh, it gives kind of, um, I don't know, nature feel, um, nurturing feel, feminine feel to me. So, and I guess this is kind of the, the style that either you like it or you don't, right? I like it. I think it's uh, different. I think it's fun. And as I said, it's very intricate. I mean, she must spend so much time making each and every card here uh, with all this detail that's in every, every card. So that's it. Beautiful. So I really like that Spirit Song Tarot. And that one I got from, this is a mass production, of course. And I got this from Book Depository, I believe. Um, this is a US game system, so I think you can get it pretty much anywhere. So that's the Spirit Song Tarot. Okay, so let's move on. Let's do the Field Tarot. Now this one, of course, is not new, but it is new to me. Um, I weighed quite a bit back and forth before I bought this. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy using it or enjoy the images. Uh, but I've seen many people use it for quite some time and it grew on me and in the end I was like, yeah, I have to have it. <laughs> I have to have it. So it's very to the point guidebook. Uh, kind of just what you need. Uh, easy breezy. Plain and simple. What I also love about this is the back. Um, I'm not sure you can see all the colors that are in this, but there's actually a little bit kind of a purpley bluish on the outside and then kind of green in the middle. So, so I really like the colors in this as well. And uh, mixed beautiful with some of my other decks. So these are the images. Now, in the beginning, um, I, I wasn't too fond of it, you know, as I said, and it took me some time to kind of get used to it. But now that I have used it and now that I've seen it, 
being used by others in different readings, I have come to love it. But I guess it is, you know, your own taste, what you like, um, and what you are used to reading, what kind of information you need in your tarot cards that will make a difference to whether you whether or not you like this. But for me, I think it's very plain, very simple, very straight to the point. And once you know tarot, I do believe that this is more than uh, good enough information on each card. And I also find that these images are quite beautiful. Um, I don't know if you agree, but for me it is. I mean, this one here, I just love it. Beautiful, beautiful. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I have definitely come to love this tarot deck. And I haven't used it yet in my readings uh, because it's quite new. But I'm really looking forward to using this one. Um, yeah, I, j I just, I, I don't know. There's just something that, and a feel, a feeling I get with these cards, okay? Uh, I love this death card. It's so plain and simple but beautiful. So, yeah, um, this is definitely a deck I'm going to use a lot in the future. Uh, it just talks to me somehow. I, I, I just, there's just a feeling and I cannot describe it. You know that, that feeling when you just, <laughs> there, there, you want to say something, you want to describe it, but you can't. So, so there's just something special about this deck for me. Maybe it's the colors, maybe it's the, the feeling that the artist is giving me. So, yeah, I love it. I hope you do too. And this is, of course, a mass production. You can get it pretty much anywhere, I think, um, still. So, yeah, that's the feel, Tarot, people. There you go. Okay, let's look at the next one. The Angel Tarot by Jane Wallace. Now, Jane Wallace has made quite a few uh, tarot decks, and she kind of had the same... Um, theme or way of making the deck. So this one was a little bit hard to get out. So first let's look at the guidebook. She always has a good guidebook where she has all the pictures in. Uh, very easy to find. Very good guidebooks. She always does this and that's I really love that. Now and the boxes are always the same. It's the same uh, style boxes on all her cards as well. I have taken out what was inside here where there was kind of one pocket for the cards and everything like that. I just find that annoying. <laughs> so, so I read that out. Anyways, okay, so this is the back. Quite beautiful, very colorful. And these are the images. Now, the only thing, if I should be a little bit critical, the, the cardstock is a little bit on the soft side here. Uh, some people like that. I, I, I think it's okay. Uh, but maybe a little bit too bendy, okay? The other thing about the, the cards that Jane Wallace makes is that she puts um, a word at the bottom of each card. Now, not everyone reads the cards in that way. So for some people, that might be a little bit confusing or annoying that it's always uh, a word on the bottom of each card. So on, on one of her other decks, which is I think is the Ocean Tarot, if I'm not mistaken, I actually bought two decks, and in one of them I cut away all the words at the, the bottom. So, but that's, I mean, that's up to you what you want to do. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just need a sip of water before we start. Still struggling with the end of a flu here. Anyways, okay, so let's look at the cards. They are beautiful cards, though. And uh, I must, I haven't used this yet, that's why there, many of them are uh, in order. Uh, I mean, all, all the, um, the minor arcanas from 1 to 10 are like this, okay? So that's just the way she does the cards, okay? You can like it or you can't, but that's the way it is. But the, um, the court cards and the major arcana have different pictures on them, okay? So this is, of course... A special style. Uh, she, I believe she uses more or less the same artists every time. So you might find that this boring, but at the same time, if you know Tarot, then it's easy to understand. Um, the reason why I bought this deck is also because uh, the angel kind of feeling in this. And when I do angel readings, I would like it to be um, a Tarot deck that also has a kind of an angel theme. 
So that's pretty much why I bought this deck because I have so many of her other decks that I really didn't need to have a Jane Wallace deck. Uh, but it was the angel theme that did it for me in this one. Uh, of course, it's easy when it comes to every suit has a different color. So that makes it easy to read. Um, yeah. Oh, there was one that missed out. The priestess. Okay. So, and the death card here is really beautiful. No, so I, I like her style. I think it's fun. It's easy. Especially when you know Tarot. And if you don't know Tarot that well, you can, of course, use just the words here. And, and you can even use it as an uh, oracle deck, actually, when you have this uh, word on the bottom, right? So... It's, as I said, it's, it's all decks have something positive and something negative. It all depends on the way you look at it, right? So that's it. So that's The Angel Tarot by Jane Wallace. Okay, let's put that aside if I can. So that's that. Okay. Moving on, let's do the next one, the Dark Wood Tarot. This is not a new deck, but it's new to me. And I also wish that this had come a little bit sooner, because this is a deck I would have loved to use for Halloween, but okay. So, this is a very thick and good guidebook. You see a lot of information in this book. Now, these are the cards with little spiders there. I think that's really fun. And the colors are okay too. Now let's look at the images. So I find these are really fun uh, images. I, I like it, but it's kind of a witchy wood theme here. So that's why I, I wish that it had come sooner so I could have used it for my Halloween readings. But next year, definitely. But also, of course, a deck you can use all year round by all means. But it has that little bit of a witchy wood feeling uh, for me. So very, very unique images. Now this art is done by Abigail Larson. Uh, if you have heard of her, I don't know, but I find her images beautiful and fun and different. So that's kind of what drew me in. As you can see, a little bit of witchy woo kind of feeling here. So yeah, I, I I just was drawn to the images very much in this one. I thought I thought it was unique and interesting for me. Uh, I like to have artists, uh, different kind of artistry when I do my readings. Um, you know, and you, you can pair it together with other artists that kind of draw maybe in the almost same way or maybe something about the coloring that fits another uh, oracle deck or something like that. <laughs> that isn't that fun. So, so for me, it's very important to have different kind of artists on my different tarot decks and such. So I'm not going to go through each and every card here because it's going to take forever if I do that. And I see that I need to have time for the other decks as well. So, but you get the picture, right? You get the idea. So that's the Darkwood Tarot. New to me, mass production. You can get it pretty much anywhere. Uh, I got mine at the Book Depository in England. So that's it. Okay, moving on to the Wild Wood Tarot. Okay, let's try and open this box. A little bit difficult. Very good guidebook. Thick guidebook, very informative. Pictures of each card. Love it. Now, the cards were, there was, of course, something inside here to split the cards, but I took that out. <laughs> this is the back. Breeze, easy breezy, good cardstock. Uh, very good cardstock, actually. And the images are just beautiful, okay? It's very kind of druid natu uh, nature uh, images. Um, I just... I was very drawn to the images in this deck here uh, when I saw other people use it, and that's why I really wanted it. So it's very much, for me, a druid uh, kind of uh, style. <clears throat> and I think that's really fun. So, yeah, um, nature calling kind of thing here. Not going to show you each and every one, but make you see 
the imagery here, how beautiful it is. I mean, come on, this is a really, really good artist. And the colors are vibrant. The, uh, the feel I get is really good from these cards. I just really, really love this deck. So, yeah, and it's not a new one, I know. Uh, it's been around for a while. And I think you can order it pretty much anywhere. Um, Wildwood Tarot. Uh, illustrations by Will Worthington, which I believe is quite a famous artist. Anyway, so that's the Wildwood Tarot. Moving on. Let's see. We have this. How to be a wildflower deck. And that is just cards. No, got no guidebook. Uh, it got images on one side, and then you got some messages on the other side. Quite easy. Um, I'm just going to flip through quite quickly just to show you the different images on the backs. Most of them are flowery, or flower-inspired, or nature-inspired um, pictures. As you can see, a lot of flowery stuff. But I find the images very beautiful. I find it to be a deck that will be very good complementary to my other decks when I do readings. And I just love that, it, you know, some of them have very easy breezy messages. Very easy when you're doing a pick a card uh, that they can choose from the image on the back, which is something I really, really love. So this is a perfect deck when you are doing pick a card readings, okay? So just to show you a little bit about this deck. Quick and easy, because I really want to get to the two last ones to have time to go through them before this video shuts itself off. It shuts itself off after four to seven minutes. I don't know why that is, but anyways. How to be a wildflower deck uh, by Kate, Katie Daisy. 78 uh, cards in this one, okay? And by the way, this is a mass production. You can get it anywhere. Um, yeah. So that's it. Now, for these two last ones that came in the mail yesterday. I flipped through that one real quick. This one I haven't even opened. Let's look at it. So this is the Disney Villains Tarot Deck and Guidebook. It's brand new. Just came out. Just been released. So let's look at it. I do believe that this is the same... Is it the same artist that did the... No, it's not. Anyways, no, never mind. Uh, a good guidebook. Uh, very good guy, but actually, <laughs> I really love this one. Uh, anyways, and so this is the back, beautiful, beautiful back, very kind of uh, Halloweeny, maybe also with the colors there. So these are the villains of Disney. So you might recognize some of them, you might not recognize all of them. Malef Maleficent, uh, we recognize. So. Just going to flip through this very quickly for you guys. I think it's so fun. I love Disney. I love the movies. I love the feel. Uh, I, I love that they have <laughs> said okay for this deck. <laughs> and I hope that Disney will do more uh, tarot decks and or, or oracle decks in the future. Uh, that would be really fun. Look at this. Isn't that fun? So from Aladdin yeah so I mean there, there is so much fun in this deck here uh, from Disney uh, different Disney movies um, Snow White I guess so yeah and the, the villains the bad people <laughs> look at that uh, the ones that are not that nice but it's it's kind of supposed to be a little bit of a spooky feel to this deck and uh, hence the the villains of Disney um, being used uh, in this deck particularly. Uh, no, I just really love it. I thought it was really fun. So this is highly recommended. Really good cardstock, by the way, too. It is kind of the feeling I get with the, the other Disney uh, deck I have, which is the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, it, it's almost the same cardstock. Uh, I do believe maybe the same artist that has actually drawn out these tarot cards but I'm not sure, so don't quote me on that. Uh, but this is this is the deck, so yeah, I hope you like it. Uh, I I really really love it. I'm so looking forward to doing to using this deck, uh, brand new, just almost uh, straight from the print. <laughs> 
it just got out. So you can find it probably pretty much anywhere. Amazon, Book Depository, wherever you buy your cards, kind of. Okay. So that's the Disney Villains Tarot Deck and Guidebook. Just need a sip of water and then we're going to open this real quick. So let's look at it. Kyle Gray. This is brand new. Just got out. Got in the mail yesterday. Okay, Kyle, let's see what you've done this time. I love his other decks. <coughs> and I'm hoping that I will be equally happy with this. Okay, let's move this band here. Now let's look at the guidebook. It looks like quite a thick guidebook. Wow, okay, so there is... Looks like it's three pages per card here. So a lot of information. Okay, I'll look at that later. These are the cards, images on the back, beautiful. Okay, let's see. One sip of water. My throat is acting up for some reason. Anyways, Akashic Records, okay. Akashic Stargate, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, so Gateway of Light Activation card. So this is very much high frequent cards, I can, I can tell you that. I see that right away and I feel it and that might be why my throat is acting up as well. Very often when I get connection with the spiritual realm, uh, my throat acts up. Wow, okay, so these cards are uh, very, very light activation, high frequency cards. So this, these cards might actually help activate your, your chakras and your, your frequency upgrade. <clears throat> yeah, I really, really feel it in my throat. Wow, okay. Yeah, these are very, oh, Pleiadian activation. Okay, so these are very specific uh, special cards, people. Serious star blessing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading in the guidebook about this one. Uh, they, they do have some uh, messages on the bottom, quite easy breezy there. Um, but yeah, these are very special cards, I must say. Okay. Oh, okay, looking forward to using this. Um, very kind of different from Kyle Gray, I must say. And so I think that's really fun that he dares to step out of the normal zone, if you will. So there you have it. That was Kyle Gray. Just going to pull back a couple of these before we say goodbye today. So there you go i hope you enjoy this video thank you so much for being part of this if you want to see the first half i will link that below so you can see the first uh, of these two fall deck haul videos and feel free to jump around my channel for readings for other deck reviews and i will hope to see you in my next video thank you so much for being with me today until the next time i see you